Welcome to the day 12 video, which covers section 5.6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. This is a review. We have learned the quadratic formula before, uh, both freshman year and sophomore year. So we're going to do it again, and then the discriminant is something new. You will notice today's video is no calculator. So we're going to do two things. We're going to solve using the quadratic formula, and then we are also going to use the discriminant to determine the number and type of roots of a quadratic equation. So far, we have learned three methods for solving quadratic equations. The first one is by graphing. The second one is by factoring. And then we've also learned the square root method. This one you may have learned in your class already, or you may be learning it in the upcoming few days. Remember that anytime we're solving, when we're looking at a quadratic, we're looking for the two points where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So today we're learning the fourth method, which is the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula has a song that goes along with it, so I'm going to sing it for you. I'm not the best singer, though. I'm just going to warn you. So the quadratic formula says x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, when to use the quadratic formula? When, while well, we use this, when the quadratic is prime. So when it does not factor. In order to use the quadratic formula, the equation has to be set equal to zero. So let's do our first example together. Example one. Uh, let me move it so we can see the equation. Okay, so I have the equation set equal to zero, so I need to check, does this factor? Well, two multiplied by five is 10. Two numbers that multiply to 10 but add to be eight, there's no such numbers. Or no whole numbers, that is, at least. Uh, so this is not factorable, this is prime. So we're gonna use the quadratic formula. A, in this case, is two, it's what's in front of the x squared. B is 8, which is the coefficient of the x, and C is 5. That's the, the coefficient that does not have a variable. Okay, so the opposite of B, that's going to be negative 8, plus or minus the square root. 8 squared minus 4, A is 2, C is 5. All over 2A, which is 2 multiplied by 2. Now simplifying, I get negative 8, plus or minus the square root. 8 squared is 64. 4 multiplied by 2 is 8, and then 8 multiplied by 5 is 40, so this is going to be subtract 40 all over 4, which is negative 8 plus or minus root 24 over 4. I'm not finished. I need to simplify this. So it's really tempting right now to just start dividing everything by 4. I can't do that because the root 24, or the 24, is under the root. So I need to simplify that first. 24 is 12 times 2. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times, sorry, this should be a 2. So I have a pair of 2s, and I have a 3 and a 2 left over. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus. 1, 2 comes out, and then 6 stays under the root. That comes from this 2 and this 3, and that's all over 4. Now I can simplify. What can I divide 8, 2, and 4 by? Well, I can divide them all by 2. So this becomes negative 4 plus or minus 1 root 6, or just root 6, all over 2. And that's your final answer. Okay, so I know it's a lot of steps. It's not super difficult, you just have to remember all the steps. So we're going to do one more example together, and then you're going to do one on your own. So looking at example 2, I notice that my equation is not set equal to 0. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7x. So I have x squared, add 7x, add 20, equals 0. I wrote it in this order so that I can easily identify a, b, and c. Okay, so the quadratic formula says the opposite of b, so negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 7 squared, minus 4, a, c. a is 1. If there's nothing written in front of the x squared, it's a 1. And this is all over 2a. So this becomes negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 multiplied by 20 is 80, all over 2. This becomes negative 7 plus or minus the square root 
of negative 31 all over 2. Okay, so first thing I notice is I have a negative under the square root. We should remember, anytime there's a negative under the square root, an i comes out. So this is negative 7 plus or minus i root 31 all over 2. 31 doesn't simplify, so I'm finished. Okay, now I think it's time for you to try one on your own. Pause the video and try example 3 on your own, please. Okay, first thing we should have done is subtract 7. So this becomes 2x squared, add 6x, subtract 7 equals 0. I forgot to show you on example 2 that that quadratic was not factorable. So here, let's just check, check to make sure that this is prime. 2 multiplied by negative 7 is negative 14. There are no two integers that multiply to negative 14 and add to be 6. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. In this case, a is 2, b is 6, c is negative 7. So you should have gotten negative 6 plus or minus square root 6 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this becomes negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. Okay, now 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. 8 multiplied by 7 is 56. This should have been a positive 56. We have this negative and this negative, which is why we get a positive. So I'm guessing if you made any mistake yet, that would be it. So this is all over 4. This becomes negative 6 plus or minus the square root. 56 add 36 is 92, and that's all over 4. Okay, now I need to simplify 92. If I divide 92 by 2, I get 46, and 46 is 2 multiplied by 23. So I have a pair of 2's, and I have that 23 left over. So this becomes negative 6, plus or minus. There's a pair of 2's, so 1, 2 comes out. The 23 remains under the root, everything over 4. Now I have 6, 2, and 4. All of them are divisible by 2. So my final answer is negative 3, plus or minus root 23, all over 2. So hopefully you got that one right. If you didn't, that's okay. Hopefully you now see where you made your, your mistake. we got to be careful with the two negatives. Um, I'm guessing a lot of us made that mistake. So that's the quadratic formula. And that's going to lead us into our next page of notes, which is, which is about the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant is the part that's under the root. So what I mean by that is it's the b squared minus 4ac. It tells us the number and type of roots or type of solutions. So the discriminant can be greater than 0. So b squared minus 4ac can be greater than 0. It can be less than 0 or it can be equal to 0. If the discriminant is greater than 0, that means it's positive. So I'm going to have a positive number under the root. If I have a positive number under the root, I'm going to have two real roots. And this is a case that looks something like this. So I have two real solutions. If the discriminant is negative, then I have a negative under the root, which is not going to give me real solutions. It's going to give me two imaginary roots. So a case like that is where we have a quadratic like this that never even crosses the x-axis. This has no real roots. Instead, it has two imaginary roots. And then if the discriminant is equal to 0, that means I have a 0 under the square root, then I'm going to have one real root. So this is a special case. This is a case where we have a quadratic that rests on the x-axis. So there's only one root here. It's this root here. It's the vertex. Okay, so let's move on. We have two examples with this idea. Example number four. It says calculate the value of the discriminant, determine the number and type of roots. Okay, so the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac. In this case, a is 7, b is negative 11, and c is 5. So this is going to be negative 11 squared subtract 4 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 5. 11 squared is 121. 4 multiplied by 7 is 28, so I have 28 multiplied by 5. Remember that this is no calculator, so this is 121 subtract. Okay, so I need to think 28 multiplied by 5. 
Well, 28 multiplied by 10 is 280, so 28 multiplied by 5 is just half of that. It's 140. Okay, so my discriminant is 121 subtract 140, which is negative 19. So I'm going to have two imaginary roots. Okay, pause the video and try example five on your own, please. My hint is to rewrite this quadratic in the correct order. Okay, so rewriting, you should have gotten 15x squared, subtract 7x, subtract 4, equals 0. The discriminant that you should have gotten is 289, which tells us there's two real roots. When you come to class tomorrow, we will be checking to see that you have all the work for this problem, the correct work and the correct answers. If you made a mistake and you didn't get 289, go back and fix it. Good luck!